Hi, everybody. Good day to you. It's Thursday, a wonderful day outside, sun shining. This is Optimum Ed, Tom, and Candace, and we are here with you again uh, to spend a few minutes talking about um, something that should be near and dear to everybody's heart. Um, Maybe near and very dear. Important. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think we have been seeing more and more evidence of the impact that uh, the COVID uh, pandemic has had on young people being home, isolated, doing virtual uh, classes and that sort of thing, um, especially for our seniors um, that are trying to now come out of the darkness and into the light and, you know, do their applications and that sort of thing. So we want to talk today about that situation. And if you're uh, you know, your child, your student um, is affected uh, by that. It was affected by that. It's still being affected mm -hmm. by that, I guess. Um, we want to talk um, about that and, you know, maybe give you some ideas about how we you might be able to proceed or help uh, your student move forward. So, um, Candace, what, uh, <laughs> what's the first thing that, that parents need to be aware of? Well, I think all of us not even just parents you know we as adults um i i've been thinking of it a lot lately because we're hopefully nearing the end but it's one of those things that we all say that with some trepidation because we don't know really what's going to happen and i think if anything the last you know year and a half plus what that's shown us is that it's all very uncertain and that you don't know. And I think, I think collectively we've all experienced a trauma. You know, when we say trauma, we think of one big traumatic event that's changed the course or whatever. But this, in addition to being one big traumatic event, it's, it's one of those systemic stressors that yeah, have been yeah. on all of us for 18 plus months. Yeah, and I it's think just been us. It really has been. And I think that the first thing you can do is recognize it for what it is, that it is a trauma, that it has added stress to our students, to us as parents, to us as citizens. Um, it's added that stress and acknowledging it as such that maybe the things that used to work for us to pull us out of a funk might not be working now and that's why yeah the the, the interesting thing is depending on on the personality mm -hmm. of, of the student it, it it could have gone well or it could have yeah. been disastrous and and tom we we talk about our assessment a lot but i think one of the things that our assessment shows us and and we just had a meeting um, this week where it really was driven home for us, I think, because, you know, we were talking with someone who was extremely anxious because their experience with virtual learning was a disaster, you know, and they just are not someone who can learn independently. They can't be given a task and left on their own to figure out how to do it. They need feedback more specific instructions and they need that interaction to be successful. So everybody learns differently. You know, as we talk also a lot about square pegs and finding square holes, like right. not everybody's going to succeed in virtual learning, you know, and that this has definitely shown us that. So if, if, um, if, if, if your, if your student has basically been paralyzed, I guess, academically, personally, by this whole thing that we've come through um is it is it is it better to uh push hard and and try to get them where they need to be or should we uh allow the student time to you know retool i guess and 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 reset um maybe, maybe even if they're a senior to even consider maybe taking uh time off to um you know, uh, allow them to collect their their emotions, I guess, or however you want to put it. I would say it's all individually in knowing your child, you know, knowing who your kid is and if they and what they need. And I think having those 
honest conversations with them if they're old enough. I mean, age appropriately, obviously, but having those conversations and acknowledging, hey, last year was difficult. <laughs> what can we do to move past it? And having those collaborative conversations with your kiddo, like, look, we are going to set the standards up high, I think. I mean, I always think setting high standards are good, but acknowledging the supports they might need to meet those standards, you know, and making sure that we are keeping an eye on our kids and making sure that we're checking in for their mental health too. you know, being back in the school setting. Some of them are excited to be back with peers and teachers and others aren't. Yeah. <laughs> others maybe aren't happy to have to engage with society again. So you're going to have that mix. Mm -hmm. But I think yeah. having high expectations, but giving them the support they need to meet them. Yeah. And I, you know, and I think that's um, for us, that has really sort of um, complicated our relationship with families and students. And it's become part of the conversation that we have in regards to where they are personally, mm -hmm. where they are academically, and what is mm -hmm. the best way to to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, and I think that you know, I, while it's while it's a bit different for us, I don't think it's a a huge shift in our our philosophy and our approach to mm -hmm. to how we um, we consult because we are all about. That that you know the individual student who they are the whole, the whole child yeah. right it will make sense yeah. for them it's just yeah. uh, this is just a different you know a different challenge I guess that we need mm -hmm. to address and make sure that we're doing the right things um, and I think that's that's hugely important because it's not worth the child's health exactly you know and if, and if they're in that a place where we need to deal with depression we need to deal with you know um, anxiety extreme anxiety and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. We need to do that before we pursue um, next steps, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of college and that sort of thing, because it doesn't all we're going to do is create a bigger problem if we we force them forward when they're not ready. Right. Exactly. Well, and I think just too on a personal level for personal development for yourself and for your kids, you know, just addressing it and not pushing it down saying, it's fine, it's fine, I'm ready to get back to normal. You know, cause normal looks different. Although we all don't really wanna say that normal is a little different now. It I know to me and to a lot of people I talk with, it just feels different. And acknowledging that it is different for better or for worse, you know, is, is key. And taking care of yourself, exercise, good sleep, all of that, and nutrition, all of that stuff Personal really does help. Yeah. And, and, and two, it's not just high school students either. Mm -mm. I mean, we've, we've had conversations with some college kids yes. that have, um, you know, really experienced turmoil in terms of trying to move forward in college. And we've had to help them, you know, uh, rediscover their path and reset. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we can help in that regard as well. Well, because college, as a college freshman last year, it looked very, very different and far, like was very, very far from meeting the expectations of what you think of going away to college should be. You know, they were isolated. They didn't have that traditional college experience. And some of them really fell flat with that and really struggled. And we've talked to a lot of um college freshmen at the end of last school year needing to reset like you right. said just needing to relook at things you know look at different paths and and ways of learning so right. and and um and, and an extension of that as well i mean that there are uh many adults mm -hmm. that have been damaged in some way by this whole uh pandemic either you know through loss of work um you know personal uh you know challenges at home um dealing with with kids and things um and, and illness. Think, you know, that's something that illness that, and loss 
mm-hmm. we can we can uh, we can help those folks as well. We can, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and sometimes it's just having that conversation and being able to look at options and and look at what's you know what the future might hold and, and just have someone to talk to 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 figure that out it could be mm-hmm. hugely impactful. And and I know you do a, a tremendous job of that. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I'm actually writing an article, writing a blog post now, um, talking about pandemic trauma and, you know, really looking at what it really was and what it still is and how to how to handle it. So, yeah. yeah. Right. And that will be up soon if you want to check it out at uh, <laughs> CandiceSuarez.com. There you go. <laughs> yep. There you go. Uh, are you going to do a podcast on it as well or what? I What's might. Yeah. yeah. I think eventually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, um, I think uh, we're going to gonna leave it at that. Um, you know, you can you can get to us through our website, optimedcenter.com. Uh, set up an appointment if you'd like to chat further about your family, your student, or yourself. Um, mm-hmm. Please reach out. We always uh, love to talk. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to chat. So with that, mm-hmm. we're going to say have a great day and a great weekend. Take care. We'll see you next Thursday. Bye. Take Bye. care.